a 500 megawatt 20 kilovolt 50 hertz three phase two pole synchronous generator having rated power factor is equal to 0.9 has a moment of inertia of 27.5 into 10 to the power 3 kg meter square the inertia constant will be so first we will write down whatever information is given right so the rating is given as 500 megawatts and the voltage is 21 kilovolts and what about the power factor this is going to be 0.9 and the moment of inertia this is j so this is equal to 27.5 into 10 q now what we have to find we have to find the inertia constant h so we will start from this point what information do we need so that we can find out h okay so h is equal to the kinetic energy divided by the machine rating in mva right now the kinetic energy it is it is what it is half j omega s m square that is a synchronous speed in mechanical radians per second right divided by g okay so you can find out g this is what the megawatt power divided by the power factor okay so this is going to give you 555.55 mva next j is given omega s m we want to find out okay so this is equal to this is related to the frequency here frequency is also given right 50 hertz frequency is given so from here you can get the angular velocity in electrical radians per second okay so what will that be omega s is equal to 2 pi f so if you substitute you're going to get 314.16 electrical radians per second now what is the relation between mechanical and electrical speed omega sm is equal to 2 by p into omega s okay and here the number of poles is it given yes here it is given as two poles so these additional information also you can write here the frequency is 50 hertz we didn't write these two right and p is equal to 2 okay so if you substitute here this you're going to get same as omega s because p is 2 okay so this is going to be 314.16 mechanical radian per second so now we know j we know omega sm and we also know g okay so you just have to substitute all these values h is equal to half into 27.5 into 10 q into 314.16 square divided by g is triple 5.55 into 10 to the power 6 okay so this if you calculate you're going to get 2.44 a power station consists of two synchronous generators a and b of ratings 250 mva and 500 mva with inertia 1.6 per unit and 1 per unit respectively on their own base mva ratings the equivalent per unit inertia constant for the system on 100 MVA common base is. So we will see how to solve this. Now here it is not given whether the machines are coherent or non-coherent. Okay, Because nothing is given we can take it as coherent. So when the machines are coherent then what will be the equivalent inertia constant? It will just be the addition of individual inertia constants. right? Now the inertia constants they are given in per unit values the base ratings are also given. So first you have to find out the actual values and then you can find the per unit value on this common base ok. So what will this be the actual value will be the per unit value for H1 for machine A or we can write this as A and B ok. So for machine A the per unit value is 1.6 and the base value is 250 plus for machine B per unit value is 1 and base value is 500. So this value you are going to get 900 ok. Now what is H equivalent in per unit? This is going to be the actual value which is 900 divided by base value which is 100. Here this is MVA only right the value is MVA. So here you are going to get 9 per unit. If a 500 MVA 11 kilovolt three phase generator at 50 hertz 
feeds through a transfer impedance of 0.0, .0 plus j.605 ohms per phase and infinite bus also at 11 kV, then the maximum steady state power transfer on the base of 500 MVA and 11 kV is. Okay? So, the options they are given in per unit. So, we will see how to do this problem. First, we will write down whatever information is given. The ratings are given as there is a three phase generator whose ratings are 500 MVA and 11 kV and the frequency is 50 Hz. Okay? Now, this generator it is feeding an infinite bus and what will be the transfer reactance that is the transfer reactance is given as J.605. Okay? So, if you take this as x, then x is equal to J.605 ohms per phase. Okay? Remember this is the per phase value here. Now, this is also at 11 kilo volt. This is also at 11 kilo volt. Then the maximum steady state power transfer on the base of 500 MVA and 11 kilo volt. So, what is the maximum power transfer? This is given as P max, this is equal to the magnitude of the generator voltage and the infinite bus voltage that means this is E bar, this is V bar divided by the transfer reactance. Okay? So, we anyways need in terms of per unit value, so we will take per unit values. Okay? So, here E dash is equal to V is equal to 11 kilo volt. Okay? and we want on the base of 11 kilo volt only. So, these are going to be in per unit value E bar magnitude will be equal to V magnitude, this will be equal to 1 per unit okay? and here we also have to find this per unit, this x in per unit. Okay? So, here, here you have 1 divided by the actual value 0 0.605 divided by See here this is per phase value, this is the line value, but since it is in per unit, you do not have to worry. Okay? And this base also, the base value that we have to take, it is going to be same whether you take the three phase value or the single phase value. Right? So, we have already discussed that in per unit system. So, this is going to be the base value, it is going to be the kilo volt square, base kilo volt square divided by MVA base right so this is going to be 1 by 0 0.605 into 11 kilo volt square divided by 500 mva okay so this if you calculate you're going to get 0.4 per unit a generator delivers power of 1 per unit to an infinite bus through a purely reactive network the maximum power that could be delivered by the generator is 2 per unit a three phase fault occurs at the terminals of the generator which reduces the generator output to zero. The fault is cleared after TC seconds. The original network is then restored. The maximum swing of the rotor angle is found to be delta max is equal to 110 electrical degree. Find rotor angle in electrical degrees at T is equal to TC. So, we will see how to solve this problem. So, just like always we will first write down the information that is given. So, it is given that generator delivers power of 1 per unit. Okay? So, P M naught which is the mechanical input which will be equal to P E naught electromagnetic output power so is equal to 1 per unit. Okay? And what else is given? The maximum power is given as 2 per unit. P max is equal to 2 per unit and delta max that is the maximum swing that is given as 110 electrical degrees and during fault what is going to happen the for the output power is becoming zero okay so if you draw the curve here this is the electromagnetic curve the p max value is 2 per unit and at 1 per unit the operating angle if you take as delta naught okay so, when fault is occurring, the electromagnetic power is becoming 0. So, it is falling to this point. Okay? And at a particular angle, say delta C, okay, clearing angle, the 
fault is cleared ok. So, this is at T is equal to T C ok. So, at that point it is going to become like this. Now, the maximum angle here it is going till 110 degrees right. So, now what are the accelerating and the decelerating areas? You extend this line here this is 1 per unit right. So, this will be the accelerating area we will take it as A1 and this is going to be the decelerating area A2. Now, we have to find out delta C ok. So, we will apply the equal area criteria A1 is equal to A2. This implies from delta naught to delta C we have P m naught minus 0 d delta. This is going to be from delta C to delta max which is 110 degrees. It is going to be what? 2 sin delta minus P m naught d delta. Now, what are the variables we know here? P m naught is 1 per unit and delta max is 110 degrees ok. So, delta naught we do not know that you can find easily 1 per unit is equal to 2 sin delta naught ok. So, from here delta naught you are going to get 30 degrees ok. So, this equation you are going to get integral 30 degrees to delta c, delta c is what we have to find d delta this is equal to delta c to 110 degrees 2 sin delta minus 1 d delta. So, here you are going to get delta c minus instead of the degrees we have to write radians here ok because if you are substituting in terms of sin delta sin or cos functions if you are substituting delta you will get the correct answer. But when you are using the angle as it is then you have to express in terms of radians ok. So, this is delta c minus 0 0.524 this is 30 degrees in radians nothing else ok and this will be equal to 2 times cos delta c minus 2 cos 110 degrees minus 110 degrees in radians is 1.92 ok plus delta c this is what you are going to get. So, delta c and delta c will be cancelled here only cos delta c is left to be found out ok. So, cos delta c you are going to get 0.3 5 5 ok. So, from here delta c you can find out cos inverse 0 0.3355 which is going to give you 69.14 degrees. A synchronous generator is connected to an infinite bus through a lossless double circuit transmission line. The generator is delivering 1 per unit power at a load angle of 30 degrees when a sudden fault reduces the peak power that can be transmitted to 0 0.5 per unit. After clearance of fault, the peak power that can be transmitted becomes 1.5 per unit. Find the critical clearing angle in radians. So, we will see how to solve this problem ok. So, first write down the given data ok. So, here we will draw the diagram that will give more clarity right. So, what is given? We will draw 3 cases. What, what is it? Before the fault, during the fault and after the fault ok. So, first you consider before fault. What information is given before the fault? Here it is given that it is delivering 1 per unit power at load angle of 30 degrees ok. So, the peak power is not given. So, what we will do? We will just draw one curve whose P max we do not know, but what we do know is at an angle of 30 degrees this is delta right an angle of 30 degrees this is power delivered as 1 per unit this is P e ok. Now, next this is before the fault. Next if you consider during the fault what information is given for during the fault here it is given reduces the peak power to 0.5 per unit. So, P max 2 is given ok. So, this is P e 1 you can write here as well P e 1 and next curve is P e 2 ok. So, here P e 2 the P max is 0.5. So, it should be below this point ok. 
So, first you can mark out 0.5 here and here somewhere the peak is going to be there. Okay. So, we will draw something like this. Okay. This is P e 2 and this is P max 2. This you can take as P max 1. Okay. Next, after fault clearing. Now, here what information is given? After clearance of fault, peak power that can be transmitted becomes 1.5 per unit. Okay. So, here 1.5 if you mark first, this is P max 3. Okay. So, here there is going to be the peak. So, accordingly you can draw the peak like this. This is P E 3. Okay. Now, next we have to identify what are the accelerating and the decelerating areas. Okay. So, initially machine was operating at this point and as soon as fault occurs it is falling down to this P E 2. Okay. So, it will fall down to this okay. and then rotor angle will keep increasing. So, we will mark these values here this is how it is increasing okay. and at some particular angle when the fault is cleared that we will take as delta 1 immediately what is happening it is going to P e 3 curve okay. and from here again it is increasing. So, now we have to find out the maximum swing angle, but we want the critical clearing angle. So, if this angle should be critical clearing angle, then the maximum swing should be delta max. Okay. So, this will be delta max is equal to pi minus 30 degrees and delta 1 will then become delta CR. So, these are the accelerating areas this is the decelerating area. Okay. So, we will take this as A1 and this is A2. So, by equal area criteria you now have to equate A1 and A2. Okay. So, now what is A1? This is from 30 degrees to delta CR critical clearing angle and here if you take this initial mechanical input as PM. So, here you have PM minus P max 2 sin delta d delta. This is equal to delta C r to pi minus 30 degrees and here P max 3 sin delta minus P m d delta. So, this if you expand then you are going to get integration P m delta C r minus here 30 degrees you have to write in terms of radians which is going to be 0 0.523. This is 30 degrees in radians. Okay. Minus P m 2 cos 30 degrees minus cos delta C r. This is P max 2 here. Okay. And similarly on the other side if you integrate P max 3 cos delta C r minus cos pi minus 30 degrees okay. minus P m once again in radians. So, is going to be 2.617 minus delta C r. So, here you need to find delta C r right. Now, this delta C r and this delta C r will get cancelled. The only delta C r is this cos delta C r and here right and all of the other values you know P m is given as 1 per unit, P max 2 is given as 0 0.5, P max 3 is 1.5. Okay. So, substituting all these values you are going to get cos delta C r so is equal to 0 0.3623. Okay. So, from here you can find out delta C r the critical gearing angle this is going to be 70.34 degrees. So, since they asked in radius you can convert to radians this is 1.22 radians.